Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pink Shade. It's Thursday. That means Shades of Bravo. And I'm so lucky because I have my friend here, Ryan Bailey, to talk about Vanderpump Rules in the Valley. Ryan, you're the expert. I'm so glad you're I, here. So sad that I'm the expert. This is I truly. This is really probably the only thing that I might be an expert on, and that's like the saddest thing to be an uh, expert on. But it is, it is truly weird. Like I was, I was on, I was on Sheena's podcast yesterday. I think it comes stop. out Friday. It mm. comes out Friday, and wow. I was, you know, but it's like I was having these moments where I was explaining the show to Sheena, and oh. really, like I would be like, Sheena, you know, the joke comes out at the reunion, right? And I'm like, oh, of course you do. You're Sheena. Like it's it's so interesting to look at these shows from a different perspective, and then to like you know like the other when we were at uh, Jax's bar to actually see them in person and have a conversation yeah. with them, and then you're like, well, the show presents it this way. You talk to them, they present it another way, and then all of us podcasters and Reddit threads and Instagram posts, it's all presented another way. So it's like what I've kind of deemed as 360 viewing that can be really exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, we're in such an age now, like when Vanderpump Rules first started, like if we wanted to get at somebody, we could really send them a tweet, you know, and yeah. that's really <laughs> it. And now it's like, these people don't even like walk out of their house without us knowing what they're doing, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's why I think it's so hard for production. I, I, I've i grown accustomed to thinking that the show is almost starting to be the least entertaining thing about the whole production because mm -hmm. there's so many other opportunities. I mean, people will listen to my show or your show and they'll, I'll get the comment sometimes, which blows me away. I don't even watch the show anymore. I'll just listen yeah. to your podcast. And that blows me away. Cause I'm like, why would you ever do it? I mean, like <laughs> yes. you've got to see it with, you got to get your eyes on this thing, but it's a really weird thing that they didn't have to deal with pre-social media. And I, th I sometimes long for those days or a romanticize those days because it can all be too much. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, you wake up in the morning and there's like 30 new things that you're being sent and having to go through. And it's, it's, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is like enjoyable sometimes. Um, speaking of that. So was it Monday was tax day, right? Ugh, and yeah. we woke up on tax day to all this Bravo news. I mean, first of all, I, I, dip in and out of Miami. I love Miami, but the whole Alexia and Todd thing, I was like, is Adriana always right? Because I hate Adriana. Yeah. <laughs> See, I love Adriana. I'm one of the, I feel like I, I know I'm in a minority of loving Adriana, but she makes, she makes things happen. Like, and by the way, like, yeah, <laughs> she does spit truth. It's just that you don't like the package in which she's spitting truth. Um, but it's also True. high. It's, it's almost impossible these days to have the moral high ground on any of these shows. Like nobody has the moral high ground. So it's interesting, even on Vanderpump rules for like Lala to like kind of claim that, or even Raquel or Rachel to like claim you have like some kind of moral high ground. And you're now, um, you know, you're now telling people how this is and kind of like, you know, I'm above this. And I think that's really hard, but I, Adriana, I think is great. <laughs> but the Todd Alexia divorce, I was shocked by, but then in classic Bravo fashion, you know, I'm now reading rumors of this is a setup. They're never going to file. This is for a storyline. And I'm like, Alexia doesn't need a storyline. I think Alexia to me is the Teresa of Miami. She does yeah. not need like, I, I feel like she doesn't need some fake storyline. I think she's entertaining as is. And sometimes I just want, I just want us as an audience just to be like, it is what it is. This is yes. what it, they're unfortunately getting a divorce. It's not without, you know, it's in the realm of possibility. Like I can understand why they would potentially get a divorce. Can't we just believe something for once? Yeah. It's sort of like we do with 90 day. Like some of the people are so abhorrent in real life. And then we're like... <laughs> Okay, well, we, we're just recapping what's on our screen, right? So we're yeah, just going to talk about what happened on this episode. Yes, it would be so easy. This person, that person, like domestic violence or getting deported or that, all these horrible things that are happening. But we have to just talk about what's on our screen. Yes, we're aware of these things. But you Mary know? Payne, that's what it's turned into. Is that right? It's not only that you have to now go back decades. You have to look at their criminal records. You have to look at, and I think sometimes people are like, "Why didn't the show do a better job at vetting them?" And I'm like. Maybe they did, you know, maybe they do know, <laughs> right. maybe this is part of like, they do want trouble. Like, I mean, so it is interesting, but I think we have all just turned into producers ourselves. 
So we yeah. are producing content nonstop. And I don't even just mean me and you, but just the general viewer. They're yeah. the ones like digging and like bringing things to light. And sometimes it's really good. And sometimes I just think it confuses everything. And at 90 day, I don't even know how you do it. Well, thank you. I mean, it's just, I mean, I got to tell you, I, I haven't even watched the last couple of episodes of this current 90 day just because mm. I always, it's like soap operas. I always know it'll be there and yeah. I'll probably be able to catch up real, real easily. Yes. Like, it's, oh, yes. Gino's still fighting. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. What are Gino and Jasmine fighting about yeah. this week? Yes, totally. And, and why do we have to keep seeing them season after season? Like, let's, let's give it, get it a break. Let's miss them for a minute. Let's take a minute. Let's let them go for a season. We don't need to follow their yes. move. But I'm sure next season they'll be on Last Resort, which is the therapy one. And then they'll get divorced <laughs> and then they'll both be on Single Life. Like we're never getting rid of them. We're never wait till, wait of them. till they involve Love After Lockup and they like get the prison 90 day pipeline. Like they well, find some way. Let me tell you about a show that I'm sure you didn't watch. Um, it was on Lifetime. It was called Prison Brides. And <laughs> it really, it was presented as sort of a love after a love during lockup. But then when you started, wa when we started watching it, cause I covered it on the $10 level of Patreon, I was like, no, no, this is a 90 day love after lockup crossover because it was women in other countries dating and marrying these guys in prison in the U S <laughs> all of these women are gorgeous women with accents and you can't get a guy locally. You got to go to the Texas prison system or the Michigan prison oh, system to find a guy in jail sense. for 40 years for murder. What? Yeah. Like I can understand people like actively targeting, dating people on Vanderpump rules. Like even Tom Sandoval, I can still understand it, but the, the, the prison system. And I think even some of the 90 day couples is where I draw like a line where I'm like, yeah. come on, like there's gotta be, you gotta have some rules for yourself. And that's what's so sad, like sad, funny and entertaining to watch on these shows is that these are people that have decided that it's just not going to work in any sort of normal way for them. And they right. need to go like drastic measures need to be taken. It's, it's, it's incredible, but I got to tell you that, you know, I always love talking to you. And, uh, if you guys listen to, uh, Ingrid and I did a recap of our whole LA trip. We did on the first night there, see Ryan at Jax's bar. We talked to Kristen and her friend, Zach, that's on the show. <laughs> that was really fun. Kristen just immediately started giving Ingrid all these compliments. And I was like, okay, well, what about me? But that's okay. Um, because Ingrid is, you know, so beautiful and they were there. And then Jax was there. He was, he bust our table. He was, he was bouncing around. Yeah. Yeah. He was bouncing around and, uh, Brittany showed up, sat in the little cast area. They didn't seem to interact too much, but they were tears together. Yeah. And it was funny when we were leaving, because when we were leaving, we were like, what is this golf cart? out here this is wild and then oh. we see on the show that it's his fucking golf cart. i mary Payne, i didn't even put that together yes and you're saying it now and i'm like oh my god yeah he's <laughs> that's a dangerous and i i don't want to make speculation or something but like i don't want jacks operating any sort of vehicle like even that I, I just feel like that's dangerous in any sort of vehicle when he's at that bar like he's uber yeah. Yeah. So I think he's trying to do like a little nudge, nudge, wink, wink to the Tom's, you know, uh, sidecar motorcycle, but he did it with a golf cart from, I don't know how far his house is unless it's directly behind that bar. He does not need to be driving a golf cart on the streets of the Valley. It's not far. It's not, it's not, it's a busy road. It, it isn't, it isn't far, but it is a busy Ventura Boulevard is one of the busiest roads in the Valley. So I would just be very cautious if I was Jax because yes. that's all he needs at this point is some sort of accident or some sort of situation where he's moving violation. Some other, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just yeah. don't need that. But at the same time, when you said that, that's all I'm picturing now is waking up tomorrow to a TMZ headline of like Jax yeah. Taylor arrested at his, you know, like that's, yeah. that scares me now. Yeah. Yeah. And he did a couple of weeks ago. So it was, it was between, uh, this and when I was in LA, so it's been the last few weeks. Uh, it was that it was a Tuesday night. It was the same situation that we saw with the cast sitting in the middle of those couches with all the tables and stuff around with 4,000 TVs. And he's with a microphone. Somebody gave him a microphone and he's just narrating and saying yeah. things like, you know, it's all scripted. You have Vanderpump rules is all scripted. Not when I was back, on it. Yeah. Back in my day, back in my day, yeah. it was real. But then the, the minute I left, it became a scripted program. Like what? Yeah. 
Yeah. Are you you're so you're saying all the seasons you were on it, not scripted, totally real. The very next season they changed it to scripted programming and we just haven't figured it out. Wow. But, but the, the thing that's frustrating, it's to my point earlier, is that they give them a mic. This winds up on social media. So this yeah. gets passed around. And then last week on Jackson Brittany's podcast, which they still do, you know, he's like, Hey, I'm so, you guys know me. I'm an idiot. I say things out of anger and no way is Vanderpump rules fake. Uh, I was just acting out. Like he had to give a full that to me, that was a scripted apology, mm. but this is what I'm talking about. It's like this ecosystem that we keep going. Like the show is sometimes the least entertaining thing because just, they they just manufacture drama out of their real lives all yeah. the time. Yeah, totally. It was it, I watched that and I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, what if Ryan and I were sitting there when he said that we would be like two podcasters got the scoop. We were sitting. Right oh there. yeah. I mean, like I was, I, they didn't give him a mic the night we were there. In fact, no. that was the saddest thing is you guys left and I hung around for another 20 minutes, I think, because I was trying to get him to bus the, uh, the pretzel <laughs> with the mamas cheese. Because we were was, sitting there, was, we were waiting for it. Yeah, yeah. He was kind of busting, like he was running all around, and he busted one time. So I thought, oh, this will be a funny video if I shoot the pretzel and then I uh, pan up, and it's Jax Taylor, and I'll be like, the service sucks here, or something yeah, funny yeah. like that. Yeah. And he was just, I mean, I couldn't. He was bouncing all around. He was no, bouncing he, all around. Then I was like, I'm literally standing in front of a half-eaten pretzel. Like this is like <laughs> the saddest thing that I potentially have ever done in my life, just waiting for Jax Taylor to do a video. We, uh, we did have a good time and the food was good. Uh, we can vouch for the beer cheese. I thought it was delish. Pri pricier than it needs to be for the, the, oh, okay. the pretzel. The, well, pretzel the, presen the presentation was lovely. The presentation was, it's a huge board, a lot yeah. of celery. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, they they really do try. They do try, but $10 for a Bud Light is to Ooh. me egregious. Oh, see, I was on that trip. I was the start of my trip of just like throw all money at this trip. I, by the, I mean, by the time I got back, it's like I've been at BravoCon. I was just like so broke because like everything in LA is expensive. Yeah. The Uber, every Uber was 50, 60 bucks. I was like, oh my, yeah. I don't even know yeah. if next time I should rent a car, it would be less, but then I have to figure out how to park. That's a whole thing. <laughs> That's a no, whole I thing. But I did love it's seeing expensive. you. And that was a, yeah. that was a, and then we, on our last night, we went to Shorts and Sandy's, which was another Tuesday night. And like, Sandoval, oh, Sandoval, so, Sandoval was there. Did you talk to Sandoval? No, I did not. Good. I did. Not. I did good. Uh, Have some good ethics, morals. I, I walked by him to go to the bathroom and I had a high hopes for the bathroom. They talked about it so much on the show and the bathroom was just a bathroom. It's, yeah. It's just, he's, he's like all hopped up on that lighted area with the mirror. Um, and I, yeah, it, it's, it's, but it's small. It's right. It's smaller than you expected, right? The bar itself is, yeah. uh, no, I'd say the restaurant and bar was about the size I expected, but our issue was, and we talked about this was our issue was we had, um, a 90 minute rule. So our reservation, I think was at seven and it was like, you have to be out of here by eight 30 and, um, uh, at eight 30, someone else is getting your table. And if you want to watch the show, you know, on the screens behind the bar, then you need to make sure you get a bar stool before 830 because I guess the show starts at nine or whatever was the time frame. Yeah. And I was like, um, OK, well, we're not really here like to eight, watch the show. <laughs> there's only like eight or nine bar stools, though. Like there's not People, a lot of bar stools. When we left, they were starting up Vanderpump Rules at whatever time that is for you guys, eight or whatever. And our 90 minutes had run out. And they were starting up, you know, the music is coming on, raise your glasses high. And everybody's like, woo, and cheering and Tom's clapping. And then literally the lady came up. She's like, your 90 minutes are up. Somebody needs to table. I was like, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then you have to put a deposit down to make sure you don't skip out on it. How much is the deposit? It's like $200. Whoa. Oh yeah, my they, God. Yeah. They didn't charge me because I showed up for my reservation. I don't know if I would ever be able to watch Sandoval watch himself this season. Mm -hmm. I think that would almost be like a weird, like sadomasochistic public flogging. And the fact that we'd all have to be kind of laughing and he would be trying to laugh along, but you know, he would be internally angry. He doesn't like, get the joke. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't think he gets it at all. I mean, this, this mm -mm. episode is like a perfect example of what perfect. we've been dealing with all season with him. Oh God. Um, all right. Well, let's get into this. Um, we're just going to go kind of bullet points through what happened on yeah. Vanderpump. So Vanderpump, how do you like them? Apples is the name of this episode. Is that because that's the name of Sheena's song? Yes. Yes. Okay. I was like, yes. 
A hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Apples is the, the, the hit single by Sheena Shea. Yes. Okay. A hit single. So we start off, this is a Sheena episode. We start off, Sheena is remaking on the 10 year anniversary. She's remaking Good as Gold. Who would have known? It's gone multi silver. I don't know what it is, but she's <laughs> remaking the video and she's so excited about it. It is a bop. We can all agree. It's a great song. I love it. Love it. And there's a lot of chatter which I know that you love this. There's a lot of chatter about the podcast. Rachel went on a podcast. There was a podcast. They never say Bethany. They never say what it was, but it was Bethany's podcast, guys. Because she's been In on fact, a million pain. We should just We should just say it's our podcast. Like, yeah, they're referring to our podcast. They don't want to say our names, yeah. but they're referring to us. But yeah, yeah, it's the Bethany. I always call her Bethany Frankel. It's that Bethany Frankel four-part Ra Raquel yeah. podcast that we hit like last July or August, which was one of the most terrible things I've ever listened to in my life. It was, each episode was like 30 minutes, but it was 22 minutes of ads. Yep. I yep. I'm sorry that my thumbs up keeps going. I keep trying no, to put I my hands it. down. Sorry. It, yeah, it was like 30 minutes, but it was um, 22 minutes of ads. And then you get her talking in the middle a little bit. And Bethany clearly having never watched the show or going, so there's a girl named Sheena. Tell me about that. It was hard. See, that's what upsets me. It's like, not the fact that Bethany gets that interview. It's that like, she obviously had her own ax to grind. So she's pushing a narrative that she already wants. So we don't really get the real things that we want to hear out of uh, Rachel. We don't get right. those, those moments. And it just frustrates me when these people get the opportunities like this. And I understand why she's Bethany's a huge star and has done so much, but like put the work in. Do you know how much better that interview would have been if she had even watched that season? Just like if season. she just hadn't yeah. seen clips, like that's the frustrating part about these people. And I think sometimes those are the people that get the most downloads. And it's frustrating for me as a podcaster, and I'm sure you as well, is that people that just dabble with podcasts, that's what they're listening to when there is so much, there's so many better researched podcasts out there yeah. that really try. Cause I, I'm still so curious about Rachel's narrative like her podcast kind of fills in the blanks but i still feel like man there are so many questions i really want to know out of rachel but it is really great to break the fourth wall and to be meta about it of like yeah, yeah man let's pull it pull the curtain back like we're talking about podcasts yeah i did I, I do like how they're really leaning into it because they have no choice i mean that's their lives right so there's all this chatter about the podcast so we, we're getting this ariana sheena lala at the good as gold um remix um video shoot we see uh lala on drums ariana on backup so um she's saying rachel is now saying on this bethany podcast that she and ariana really weren't friends so we get a thousand clips of rachel saying these are her best friends her forever friends these are her ride or die you know so we get you know. yeah then we um she says that sheena has a savior complex and Rachel says on the podcast that she contributed when, to Sheena's house when she lived there. And she was like, oh, my God, she gave me a thousand dollars. And she says she didn't pay for parking cable. And she had sex in my bed and she never stocked the toilet paper. <laughs> didn't you want to say, but what about the pins in the drawer? Did you put pins yeah, in the drawer? Yeah. yeah. But I like the fact that she also alludes to uh, Raquel being like a heavy bathroom user. Like, man, <laughs> she went through that toilet paper. Wow. I don't know what's going on in there. She needs to lessen up on the fiber. <laughs> so then we go to um, James and Allie and they're talking about the podcast. And Rachel said she never loved Tom on that podcast. And then we get the clip of her saying, yes, they were very in love. Yes, yeah, she loved him. So this is this whole, you know, then have you noticed now are James and Allie now the narrators of the show? Yeah. I mean, I always say it's like I call people like reliable narrators and sometimes you're put in this position of like, wow, how did this happen? I would say obviously more Allie, but Allie gets less screen time than James. I think Allie obviously is a really good influence on DJ James Kennedy, but it is interesting from seeing past seasons with DJ James Kennedy to now that like, wow, he does seem to be talking sense. He does seem to get it. And even later when we talk about that scene with Sandoval, he makes complete sense. He's yeah. able to kind of understand what's happening. Now, I think Lala wants to be a reliable narrator, but I don't, I can't, to me, she isn't. I think she wants to be, but yeah, you're exactly right. I think if anything, Allie is number one and James is following, you know, behind her, but yeah, very. Yeah. Very and it's, it's interesting too, about James, what we said earlier, you know, there's a lot of stuff out about James and, you know, his behavior towards Kristen and his behavior towards, you know, Raquel and 
all these things. And it's again, like, do we talk about the rumors or do we just, we're just recapping what's on our screen, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean that's was- the thing. I, I think if we go into season 12 of Vanderpump, which we will have eventually, you know, James is probably going to have the hot potato again and have to answer for certain things uh, just because that's the nature of this show. And I yeah. will be curious when that happens. But I was talking to a guest this week of like, do you believe that people can change? Do you mm. believe, you know, like, do you believe that, you know, I, I really and, and it's a question that I I don't know the answer to. Like, I asked that of myself, like, do you believe or do you believe that we know behavior happens? We write that person off entirely. And it's one of those really big questions that I feel is interesting. And I think that's part of the frustration with Sandoval is, you know, obviously admitting to all of these things, but you can just tell he's truly not sorry. Like I, That's the thing, you know, like he doesn't seem to no. really think he needs to ask for forgiveness. And I think that's the frustrating thing as a viewer. I do like it when they go on, uh, watch what happens live and Andy will play clips of terrible things they've done. Like, do you regret it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, usually well, like, no, a, yeah. no, yeah. no, well, no. I mean, and they've all done it. This was just yeah. a very big thing, but I, I would like to imagine that people can grow and I, yeah. I would like to imagine that, but reality television doesn't really promote growth a lot. <laughs> right. Oh Lord. Um, so life without Anne, we find out that the, house of ariana and tom is a total disaster they didn't need us to tell we didn't need to tell us that we've seen this season never seen so many boxes in a house yeah why I, you guys break down I mean, the there's boxes. perishables there's like the, there's food laying out yes for, potentially in like gift boxes from like christmas months and months ago yeah and i thought wow the mess from ariana's room is slowly making its way down to the entire house and yeah. i mean you would think i guess Anne was really the clean person in that But also, I think at this point, Ariana was like, knew she was moving out. Things were happening. Dancing with I know she didn't even stay at that house for a lot of Dancing with the Stars. So, you know, I'm sure that house is in wild disarray at that point, regardless. But really weird to see. They need a house cleaner, not an assistant. Yeah. By the way, just a normal house cleaner would do it. A house cleaner. Yes. (laughs) That's not an assistant's job, by the way. Well, so, by, by the way, just imagine all of the, the laxative pills laying around. I mean, we had the dog Maya getting into Sandoval's laxative collection and like swallowing 500 laxative pills like that thing. I mean, they 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 just need to not leave things around like that. Yeah. How about a chicken skewer? Take it to the trash. Just take <laughs> it to the trash. It's just right there. Um, in our house, I've got like lots of, you know, trash cans with lids and the dogs haven't figured out how to press that little pedal yet. And once they do, I got to go to something else. So. Um, now we're over at Schwartz's apartment. Now, why does Schwartz have like a either giant dog bed or giant air mattress on the floor next to his couch? What was that about? I think it's the, I think it's obvious. I think it's a dog bed, but I love the fact, I mean, his dogs are tiny, but talking about a metaphor. I love that he was laying on it. He's the ultimate (laughs) dog potentially. And that was his bed. No, I think he, he, he seems like that guy of like, more comfort. I'll give them the biggest dog bed, even though they're tiny. I think that's 100% a dog bed. Okay. Unless that's where he made Joe sleep. <laughs> I think she had a guest room. But it, yeah. <laughs> the dogs like a small space. You know, they like to be tight in their space. That's why you can put them in a crate and stuff. So he read the wrong I don't, dog training but, book. But Payne, I don't think Schwartz is like thinking in that way. I think okay. he's thinking of like the bigger, the better of like more comfort. Like, I don't think he's legitimately thinking about it things in correct ways. We see. You might be thinking I could lay on this bed and snuggle with them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We see that it looks like his favorite place to lay. I know. Him and that hair. So Sandoval comes over and well, he, was- he's like, he's like, I like, he's like, what's up, dude? Oh, what's up, dude? Like he's, I like that. He's all like sad. Oh, listen to a podcast, dude. Like I, it's like so all sad sound of all sad. And I can't wait to listen to Amy Phillips talk about this. Cause you know, she plays Sandoval as like an angry teenager with a retainer. Oh really? It, it's like, Call <laughs> it, mama. I don't want to do it. Call it. That's how she plays him. And it's so funny because it's so true. So he's like trying to play the victim and he's like, yeah, like I'm making all these changes to myself and I can't believe Rachel thinks she got it the worst. Swartz is like, well, uh, you got it pretty bad, both of you. And like, God, it's not a competition. You're both terrible people. Both terrible people. So, I thought he was like more sad that there was just, he's like, 
the amount of ads I had to listen to was insane. It was so sad. It was like half ads. Oh, like, is, there, is there an ad free episode? Can yeah. I pay $5? But once again, it's like, it was so funny that he's like, he's once again admitting that it's like, I did so many things for her. I was clean. Like, it's like, we, we're always told like, do things for yourself, man. Like, like make sure you're good and don't do anything for somebody else. And this was yeah. the whole fallacy of this relationship anyways, yeah. Yeah. was that don't like position this as love when like you were, I mean, in the moment, just not thinking even with the right head at all. So this isn't like start to admit. And I want to point out at this time, he was still sleeping with other people. He was oh. out there dating. It wasn't like, he just oh, went to dude, singles uh, night, like two nights yeah, ago. Like, <laughs> he's not saving himself for Raquel. Like he's right. not he like, so he's like, Oh dude, like that's the funny thing. It's not like he was like locked away in some like, you know, virginity purity closet. Like he was out there actively hooking up with people. So yeah. it is rich when he's like, you know, like I'm like, so love mean, what does love mean to Sandoval? Love means just a thought, but I can physically still act out quote unquote love with as many girls as I want. Right. Cause she's not here. So what is she? Yeah. So yeah. he's like to go through all that and not give it a shot. Like, what was it for? I'll do anything for her, man. And then he's like, Ugh! and Schwartz is like, it's over, man. It's been over. I yeah, like, I bet all right. Schwartz, yeah. For Schwartz to be the smart one. And he's just right. like, oh, I, I got to tell you again, man, it's, it's been over, dude. Like the fact dude. that he's, and it just, it, I know that like that, like that friendship is there. And when your friend is just not thinking clearly yeah, and you're just like, dude, we can all see it. And the fact that you can't, uh, I mean, kudos to Schwartz for like legitimately hanging in there as a friend, but it is interesting to watch because Sandoval just doesn't seem to get it. And I think in his head, no, he's he literally thinking if I can claim, if I can keep like doubling down that this was love, this absolves me of my initial sins. Yeah, this and also if, this is if like we Romeo end up together, Julia. yeah, if we end up together in the end, it would have all been worth it. Yes, and exactly. She's, ru that's she's a, ruined that plan. Well, and to, exactly. This is what he said in the New York Times interview. He's literally, he's literally directing scenes in his head. So in his head, even though he made this massive mistake, in his head, he sees a storyline where they do. It's them against the world. And in some way, that will be this kind of beautiful story. Like, he sees it. Like, I guarantee you, he sees this scene in his head. He sees yeah. this season in his head with her. And for him, she fumbled his bag. She yes. made this hard for him to do the narration that he wanted and had in his head. Yes, totally, totally, totally. So... Um, now we're at Tom, 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 Tom brunch is going to be a thing. And I noticed when I was in LA that they put that pump sign right up next to Tom, Tom. It's too I'm much. Like, like don't, why? it's so confusing. I, I mean, just let somebody, let Tom put it in his backyard at his like single, you know, pool, like agree. Yeah. Agree. I don't understand why they had to put that sign up. I was like, is it because it's like, oh, it's we, tacky. It's too we much. Paid, we paid this money for it. So now we got to put this sign up. It's like, we get it. Stop. Yeah. Are we going to get, um, Villa Rosa, no, Villa Blanca's sign Villa up Blanca. next to go right under it. Yeah. Just, R. just R. looks like the horrible amount of bumper stickers on something. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it's like. So Tom Tom Brunch is going to be a thing. They're going to lean more into the food and they're going to keep the pump spirit alive. Everybody's going to unbutton Thank their God. shirts. And yeah. Um, so LVP is there and she's like, Who cares about this podcast with Raquel? He's late for our meeting. Um, and you know, she's like, she's alive. She's safe. It's been over three months. He should get over it. She doesn't love him. <laughs> and um, Schwartz is like, yeah, he's in a bad place. She's like, who cares? Three episodes ago, I cared. Now I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I mean, let's say we got a business yeah. to run. Like, yeah, pull yeah. your big boy pants on and let's go. I mean, we've already given this a lot of time and people yeah. are like harping on Ariana. Let's like, like, look at this man. He's still not like getting it together. He still yeah. wants to pout over the same things. Yes. Yes. So he arrives late and she's like, you're really late. He's like, Oh, I brought the pureed strawberry. <laughs> and she's like, do you want to talk? You're unhappy about the podcast. What's going on? Just don't listen to it. He's like, oh, gotta hear what people are saying about me. Lisa. Good. Uh, he oh. is just, she just looks at him like I definitely hitched my wagon to the wrong horse. Hitched my horse. Yeah, I mean to the that's but wagon. that's what what happens when you get yourself in business with with men. Sometimes we're idiots. Like we're <laughs> lovable idiots. We're lovable idiots that make the idi most idiotic choices ever. So like Lisa has nobody to blame but herself. But it is hysterical that it's like 
we're I'm asking the bare minimum. Just show up on time, Tom. Yeah. Just show up on time. Yeah, 45 minutes late and no bueno. So Tom explains that, you know, Ariana, finally, the lawyer's going to reply about the offer, but now he's rethinking the offer because it's been so long and blah, blah, blah. So Lala arrives for no reason whatsoever, uh, just to an empty bar and says, uh, I'm just going to ask Lisa if she can uh, host my sperm donor party tomorrow. Now, you had me until you said tomorrow, because once we see this party, we're like, you didn't pull so this fake. shit together so Sunday. So th this is what we're talking about in terms of, and reality shows have always done this, but this is, you got to, you got to hire the crew. Like the crew has to know the call time. The crew gets the, like, this is all I'm planned. talking about the so party, the, it's the party itself, yes. not even the crew. The party but itself I mean, would take weeks to plan. Yeah, I'm just saying that this is this is the stuff I hate in reality television yeah. because it's like, we don't need this. We don't even need to like pretend that you asked Ariana first. Like you right. always knew it was going to be at Lisa's. Yeah, right. Totally. So now Sheena and Brock are going to help Ariana clean up her messy house. Good luck. You're going to need a box cutter and a flattening device. So <laughs> then we go to Tom Sandoval and his band practicing. And oh my God, they're practicing with the smoke machine and he's wearing a dipped out <laughs> shirt. So if y'all think he's not leaning in, you're wrong because he is now wearing his own merch that he's made fun of Lala for making merch. But, but I, don't even think this is his, I don't even think this is his merch. Like, I don't think he's even selling this shirt. Like he missed that kind of wave of man. Like I, I don't even remember that shirt in particular on sale, but like, I don't either. The funny. The funny thing is for somebody complaining about money, man, he's sure decking it out for his like karaoke band. Like it's a full soundstage. They got a smoke machine going. They've got video projection. He's got in-ear monitors, which like yeah. the biggest acts use. So the amount of money he pumps into this band yeah. is wild. So, it, but it's, it's to Tom Sandoval that it's, it's very, it's all spectacle. You know, it's like, it's yeah. all, like, Hey, work on the music and then let's add all of the other stuff, the accoutrement to it. So it is kind of funny. It's like a weird owl thing for me a little bit. Oh, <laughs> so, um, James arrives with hippie, dippy do the dog and he arrives. Oh, yeah. Hippie and knows Sandoval very well. Like when yeah, he would yeah. be hooking up with Raquel, you know, like Graham, the dog would have to watch whatever went down with them. Yeah. Hippie's in, like, in wait studio. a minute. You look yeah. familiar. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> he arrives and, uh, James is like, Oh, um, yeah, here's the talk of the town. My dog, you know, my dog, everybody talk about what a bad dog owner I am. Here's the dog. And Sandoval's like, but dude, what about me? She's talking about me, dude. And Sandoval's like, um, yeah, I just want you to know that uh, she said that she told you not to drink because she didn't think you could do it. And that's why she told you that. And James goes, well, she also said on the pod she never loved you. So I don't know. Yeah. She like, said she never loved you. Like it was the weirdest miserable dick measuring contest I've ever seen. But yes. Sandoval though was like, well, she told me this dude. Well, I'll just end of the whack. Like he was just staring ahead. They like, he wouldn't stare directly at DJ James Kennedy. It was so, I, I mean, to me, this scene deserves all of the Emmys. I thought this was <laughs> amazing. It was amazing because they're both like leaning against the wall and James is trying to be like, she said this about you. Well, she said this about you. Well, she said yeah. this about you. You know, it was so like third grade. It was great. And then James is like, look, man, your relationship was like you fucked a lot and then it's over. So she was never in love with you. And he's like, no, dude, that wasn't it. Like, you don't even know, man. <laughs> We would talk sometimes for five or six hours, dude. The sex was a very small part, dude. He literally was like, it was a very small part. We would sometimes talk for five hours, dude. Like, I just love the fact that I was like, oh, this is hysterical. Like, you're actually entertaining this argument, Sandoval, and then revealing more stupid information about, like, why this was real. This was real love. And it, like, for DJ James Kennedy to kind of nail, like, he hit the nail on the head of, like, no, dude, it was pretty much an F fest. We that's what it was. You were horny for each other, period. You know? <laughs> yes. And that was the initial like those initial stages of like any new relationship. That's what you're like doing. A, it yes. is that feeling of euphoria, yeah. but it's also really driven by a sexual chemistry that you can't wait that eventually starts to peter out over time, which we see on a lot of other like on the valley. But yeah. I think that's hysterical of like convincing, like, no, dude, we had the deepest, we cured cancer, dude. <laughs> we like talked big things, big. Yeah, you wouldn't understand. Big. 
You wouldn't understand, James. You wouldn't understand. And James is like, uh, I don't know. Your memory is messed up. You rewrite history and I'm not opening for you at the L Ray. I've moved on. Yeah. <laughs> Santa Paul's like, you can push a button to your laptop. Yeah. What did you face. say? What did you <laughs> say? Say it to my face, old man. Say it to my face. It was so funny. And on the week, I, what a great episode to air the week that he literally DJed at the biggest Coachella after party with Taylor Swift side stage. What a time, like what a time for this episode to come out. It's yeah. so sad for Sandoval. It is. It's so, oh God. But I love that. He's like, go push a button to your laptop. He's like, say it to my face. He's like, I will. Yeah. Ooh, let me turn off my smoke machine. I got to tell you, I think, I think DJ James Kennedy would win in a fight. I do. I think he, is, well, who I mean, won? Who won buff. the push-up they're contest? We saw the push-up contest at BravoCon. I think it was. I mean, I was. I blacked. I blacked out. I tried to black that out. That was. I was on the front moment. row watching. That every... was a dark moment in Banner Pump history. Um, Sandoval was in a kilt. Yeah, you guys yeah. with fake tattoos all over. But to him. me, to, that's like what's so funny about the guys is that they're. That's essentially what we're doing just in life is just push-up contests against other yeah. men. That's it. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. It's, uh, you know, all of this, you know, deep emotional torture. But at the end of the day, we just want to see if we can do more pushups than the other guy. Yeah. And I think that is hysterical. But I, I would pick DJ James Kennedy winning a fight because he's buff and he's also scrappy and young. And he's I think Sandoval, younger. I think Sandoval is ripped, but like we now know that Sandoval is just full of laxative pills and weird substances. So I can't, I think he looks great. I think if you like hit that guy two times, he would potentially just like deflate. Yeah. He would, he would like disintegrate yeah. like a movie. I get so high. <laughs> Superstar. So we go to the sperm donor party that was put together yesterday. Sure. Um, and we get a who's your daddy sign and everybody cheers and claps. They pick donor number one. Who cares? Um, Allie, <laughs> do Allie does tell Katie that Lala said you're miserable and get upset <laughs> easily. And Katie's like, what? How? What the fuck? Why is she talking behind my back instead of to my face? And I was like, okay, what is this Allie. a reality show? What is she doing talking behind my back? I was like, all right, Allie getting in there. All right. All right. Now we see. But by the way, I want to point yeah. out this is why Allie works because Allie can say things like that because thus far she hasn't done any reality show sins. So yeah. she can say things like that and get away with it. She can actually drive more story and plot line. And I, I can't wait to see her in season 12 because she hasn't done anything that we're like, oh, that's completely out of pocket. So yeah. she can pull that off completely. Until like next season, they're like, remember when she did that? Why yeah. is she saying things that aren't true? You know, exactly. So Sandoval and Schwartz and his new assistant slash only friend Craig are hanging out at Sandoval and Ariana's house. And why is Sandoval wearing a knife on his leg? Why? Well, also, why is this guy sitting down when the house is such a mess? If you're like, like, pick up something, I'm not paying you to sit here with your tattoos. But to your point, yes, for somebody that like I'm, I was true. It was funny to me to a point. And then I got like, yo, man, maybe don't wear the knife around your leg when you've talked about very dark times. You've talked about Kyle Chan having to come and take the guns out of your house. So you're just strolling around life with a knife on your leg like that yeah. to me was funny. But then the more I thought about it was really scary to me of like, I didn't no, like it. What? And I didn't like his joke about cutting the dog cutting in the half. dog. I was like, that's gross. That's not funny. It's it's not funny at all, and especially just to his mental, you know, state. I, I just the uh, to get a knife first off is you know that's a big purchase, but then to be like, I'd like to wear it around my leg, dude. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna wear shorts so it shows off my knife leg holder thing. And I, I to me that was just a bridge too far. I was like, yeah, gross. yeah, I agree. So Sandoval, you know, starts to ask Schwartz to move in and Schwartz is like, don't even say it. It's not happening. It's a bad look for me. Don't say it. <laughs> and he says, yeah, it would be $6,000 a month for rent. And then Schwartz is like, Ooh. are you out of your fucking mind? So Schwartz says he pays $4,500 a month yeah. for his two bedroom apartment. And Sandoval obviously pays $12,000 a month in mortgage. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. And that's before the refi. If he has a refi, then that would like uh, potentially double, I think. Right. Uh, I mean, you got to watch the Vanderpump rules after show too, because 
Ariana went way more into all of the financial situation, which I thought was really needed because a lot of people seem to have like false assumptions about this house and you know, who owns what and Ariana yeah. staying in there, but it is it, the amount of money. And at some point, I mean, I hope by the end of the season that he, I, I just think it's another dumb move. Like just, just go man. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why? Yeah. Why? So Schwartz is like, are you insane? And he's like, we could get like a co-loan. And Schwartz is like, I've already done that with you. Like, no, like, what are you talking about? So now we get the narrators again, Allie and James are talking and she tells him about what happened at the donor party. And um, she was upset because there's no information on the birth chart because they didn't say where yeah. the donor was born. She was upset about that. So she, how could she pick one? And that was annoying to her. And she said that Lisa asked her about having babies and she, she just tells James flat out, I've never been that girl. I've never been like, I dying to have kids. I want to have kids. I don't have a Pinterest board with my wedding and my ring. And I'm just never been that girl. You know, it's not to say she can't become that girl, but she's a little bit like Ariana in that way, I guess. Yeah. And that that's just not her thing. So everybody come down on Allie then because you sure yeah. came down on Ariana for not wanting kids. Yeah. And he's like, he's, he's like, we're a year and a half into this and I do think you're my forever person. So I don't want to, he basically, I don't want to waste five years with you for you then to tell me that you don't ever want to have kids. She's like, I don't know if I'm going to come around. I mean, she, what, how old is this girl? She's like 24. She's so young. Yeah. I, I think she's young. I think she's, yeah. I, I'm not sure her actual, actual age, but she looks very young, but also I, it seems like she has a good head on her shoulders. Like I yeah. like, I mean, she seems like she's able to speak for herself and like actually stand up for what she wants, which I would right. imagine would be very important in a relationship with DJ James Kennedy, especially. And, you know, like it pulls at your heartstrings a little bit of like, oh, a picture us with a family, Ali Dali. Oh, you know, like, but you're like, hey, in, in good time. And and I yeah. would imagine it's good that you take time, especially when you are a reality show couple, smartest thing you could possibly do. Yeah. And he's, you know, struggled with sobriety and other issues. So, I mean, he needs to pull it all the way together before he yeah. needs to think about, you know, bringing kids into it. I mean, they just got the house by the airport. I mean, slow your roll, slow your roll. Yeah. I mean, but just imagine the kids sleeping through like a constant uh, flight pattern of Southwest flights, you know, it's going to be hard. <laughs> you gotta have that sound machine on all the time. So they won't know the difference. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's brunch at Tom Tom with DJ James Kennedy <laughs> spinning his sick tunes. And he comes in and immediately apologizes to Sandoval. I'm yeah. sorry. I said that man. I oh, do want to, I do want to DJ. That, I really appreciate that. dude. Yeah, I do. That was weird. Wasn't it? I didn't think they were going to resolve that. So quickly. Oh, I, I thought this was another thing that's so funny about guys. It's just like huge explosion, really dark, hurtful things. And then it's just like, sorry. Oh, thanks dude. Sorry too. Like, that's it. They drop yeah, it. Like they drop if it. it's a woman on Vanderpump rules, we'll drag this out for years. I mean, like we'll go to war over the things the women say about each other, but that's what, I mean, it is so funny. I think at the end of the day, we just don't give a lot of, um, we don't give a lot of respect or respect to what the men say. So even when they do like hit the nail on the head, you know, they're just going to like, uh, like be fine anyway. So we don't really put a lot of stock in anything they say. We yeah. know women actually think clearly, think a little bit more clear about things and their emotions run sometimes way more deep in a very real way. So that's what I like will always be drawn to on Vanderpump. But the guys, it's like, God, you, you, you have this great argument and then you're just like, Hey bro, sorry, sorry, bro. We're all good. Cool. Like how, yeah. how would you be good? How? After somebody said that stuff to you, I don't know. If somebody said these things to me that any of these people say on any of these shows, I would never recover. So oh, I'm no. definitely it, it not game over. on the TV. Yeah. I would be like, well, that's it for me. So, um, Lala, they're all sitting there. They're you talk. Oh, the food is so great. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, Lala says to Allie, did you say that I said she's miserable? And Katie's like, that's <laughs> what you said. And Allie goes, I mean, I don't know if that's exactly what you said, but um, I don't know. According, according to your chart, you did say it. According to your birth chart in the yeah, third moon chart, is when you yes. said that. By the way, did you also notice Ariana like chowing down on the food? Yes. She yes. was like shoveling it in. I was like, God, good for her, man. She looked good like she had never like hadn't eat. I, I was like, this is how I eat. Well, she's looking for that dining room table food and it's all expired. <laughs> she's like, it's, all, <laughs> it's all expired or she's lost it in some yeah. sort of box collapse. Uh, so um, 
Katie and Lala sort of like have this conversation about like, I don't feel like you have time for me. And we used to be such good friends last year. And then Sheena, you know, chimes in with like, Lala just needs people to check in with her every day. And they both tear up and hug. And Ariana, while she's shoving the food in, is trying to get a line in. She's like, can we all just sit in the bed together and snuggle? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. That's what uh, I told Sheena yesterday. I, Sheena yesterday, I was like, can't you guys just all get in a flipping group text and just say, Let's all hang at Coachella. Let's all be nice. Can't we just men, like, can't we just all, the girls just all get along? Can't yeah. we? And yeah. Sheena said they did have a group chat and then somebody started it. She didn't say who started it, but somebody started it and then nobody responded in the group text. Like they <laughs> added all the ladies and there's nobody responded. And I was like, oh man, that's dark. <laughs> that's funny. So, um, Sheena walks up and to Sandoval and Schwartz. So Sandoval and Schwartz are talking and Sandoval's trying to be like, yeah, my guy's got another property. She, there's Sheena right there. <laughs> so, what we, when my friend group, what we do is if somebody walks up and you're talking about them, you go, Caca! well, that's not obvious at all. No. And now, and now you gave that away. Good. Yeah. But it's funny because everybody knows it. So when somebody walks up, you'll be like, Caca! like to make them think you're talking about them. Um, I have no idea so how that's what Everybody on this reality show should be. Yeah. Nobody should be revealing any information to anyone on this show. Like that's the funny thing at this point, 11 seasons in like, yeah, don't talk about like, I mean, I know there's no show if you don't, but it is right. funny of like, yeah, of course. Like, yeah, be quiet when Sheena comes around. Yeah, be oh, quiet. When, like, like, of course, like this is how the show works. God, it was funny. And so um, Sandoval, she's like, how you doing? He goes, yeah, the last three days have been really rough on me. And I just feel like probably I'm <laughs> never going to get any closure. And she goes, yeah, so none of us are. Anyway, I wrote a song about it. <laughs> and he goes, he goes so she's great. just not letting him be like, poor me. She's like, okay, yeah, we're all in the same boat here. Yeah, so she's she having fun with it. Yeah, she goes, I wrote a song about it. And um, she goes, and one of the lines is, I went from a Ferrari to a Jetta. I thought she would know better. <laughs> and, and Schwartz goes, yeah, I mean, that could be anybody. And then his talking head, he goes, except for Rachel literally used to drive a yeah. Jetta. <laughs> Listen, Ferrari I, to I a think, Jetta, I thought you knew better. It's a pretty good line. I think Sheena is our Paul McCartney. Like she's like a, <laughs> wow. a combination of Lennon and McCartney. I think it, wow. it rhymed. It had a meaning. It was, I got a shot off. I I, I loved it. Wow. Wow. Well, um, I we can agree to disagree on that. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the Valley. So we've got season one, episode five, the D word and D word divorce. Divorce. Yeah. So there was a lot of foreshadowing in this episode, which I liked. I liked. Yeah. And so, if the preview for next week's episode already looks insanely good. It's just the like show it all is pops so off. good. The show it is really, so good. That, and that's why I just like, uh, we're so quick to like, say we don't need something like everybody with this show was like, Oh, I don't need to watch them. But who asked for this? And it's like, we got to give things a chance because there's some real darkness here. There's some really good reality show <laughs> yes. moments and they're yes. only five episodes in. Like, yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, we want things to continue. We want new things to talk about. Th here it is. This is it. Yeah. I agree with you. So um, there's two premises of this episode, right? There's going to be a, a Malibu beach party at Nia's friend's house, which the production kept saying Nia's friend's house, which is funny. And then Jax is going to have a pool day with the guys. So these are the two <laughs> situations we're working with here. First of all, Brittany's getting ready. And I want people, if they're watching, to notice when she comes downstairs and was like, hey, Jax, I'm getting ready to go. When she comes down, she turns and on the inside section of one of her bosoms is the biggest bruise I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Did you notice this? I, I just know I did notice the outfit and the extreme amount of cleavage, but I yeah. did not notice the bruise. Okay. You don't see it again on the episode because the rest of it is like in the car when she's like shoving in Cheetos or whatever. But she, when she's talking to Jack, she's leaning and moving. And there's a giant bruise on her boob. What don't you think that's like probably her son like banging his head into her chest or something like that? It could well, be. It could be a kid thing. but Because it doesn't seem like Jax is going near those things. No, I don't think so. so. But it just was like, wow, pick a different outfit if your bosom if is you're bruised. bruised. Yeah. Yeah. So we're supposed to believe now that Jax is Mr. Mom. He's the only one that cleans the house. He's the only one that cleans up the yard. It's just without him, the whole place would fall apart. Yep. Yep. So Brittany He's tells, extremely organized, you guys. He wants you to know he's extremely type A and organized. He needs things done. 
he can't stand it when it's messy. So yeah. um, Brittany tells Janet um, in the car that Jackson attacks and says, okay, Jackson attacks and y'all get drunk and have fun. We love you. And, um, but you know, he gives me a hard time if I come home after a night of drinking. And then we see a clip of Jack's like we, like we know him and love him. He's walking around holding the baby and she's hung over. And he says, you want more kids? You want to be a mom? Act like one. Yeah. Pull it together. Pull it what together, a, woman. What a dick. What I mean, a truly dick. Truly a dick. I mean, the only thing I would say, like, if, if there was a leg to stand on, if this was repeated behavior day after day after day. But, yes. like, if you're encouraging, then, and also, if there's an issue, then also, after that scene, don't send a text going, have a great girls' night, enjoy yourselves, get tipsy. Don't send texts like that then. Like, you confuse the message. But we know Jax. We brought, like, he just likes to bitch and moan about things, yeah. about other people's good times sometimes. Like, he'll yeah. just. He's just miserable inside. Let's also remember that Brittany's mom is in town to help. So let yeah. me tell you what. I can tell you when my kids were little, if I had a babysitter or somebody staying at my house, I'd be like, tonight's the night because I don't have to do anything tomorrow because I've got a babysitter here. So she's probably yeah. like, I not only do I have my husband there who told me to go and have fun, my mom is in town to play with the kid. And Jax is lucky. Like he gets a night away from Brittany. He gets to hang with his boys in his house. He mm -hmm. doesn't have to drive anywhere in his little golf cart. He doesn't have to go to Malibu. He gets to stay there. And But I just think like Jax is one of those people that like you can just tell his internal rage. He just clocks things. He's like, this is yeah. something she did against me. I encouraged it at first, but now this is an assault against me, Jax Taylor. Yeah, I think that's right. So Janet and her confessional is like, yeah, I mean, I do think. Britney sometimes gets a little too lit, but she's <laughs> married to Jack. So I'll be honest. I don't know. Like maybe I like the party. I like to cut loose. Yeah. Oh my God. If we got one more scene of her going, woo. Okay. Let's party, party woo! girls, girls night. Woo. Ooh. Oh, and like, and then like, this is what, so this is so what like living with Jax Taylor does. Do you notice she's like, she's this permanent down when she talks, she's like a down. Well, you know why though? Why? What quit doing that? <laughs> Why? She because of that lipo on her chin. Oh, Kybella? No, she had lipo. She'd already she had Kybella a couple years ago because she posted about it because she got it for free. She had lipo on her chin, which is totally different. That's like go under uh, Kybella uh, is in the doctor's office with Botox and you do um 12 across, you do it three okay. times. Didn't work. So she, uh, and it doesn't work for some people. She had actual chin liposuction. It's the same as you would go on your stomach or your legs. It's actually a surgical procedure that people get. Sometimes instead of a lower facelift, they just get this part sucked out. So she, I know a lot about this. She had chin liposuction, a full surgery where they, but it's dangerous because there is a nerve there that they can cut that when the, pull your mouth down. So oh that is what happened to her. Gosh. And she has said now it's fine now because it's okay. healed. But that's why I think that when they greenlit this show, it was like, we're starting in one week because no way would any person choose to go on reality te television eight weeks after having twins. Yeah, oh my gosh. That was, my heart went out to her. Yeah. So Tania? I think that when they, oh when they goodness. greenlit it, I think when they greenlit it, like we got to go. Cause she, I don't think Brittany would have ever chosen to start it right then when she was just recovering from that. Her, the whole season, her face is going to look like oh, that. But and, and then the one, like they have two separate talking heads for Brittany. And I know it's not, uh, it's uncouth to talk about women's looks and I'm sorry, but it is startling to watch the two different, um, talking heads because in one, it, I thought somebody was making like, uh, doctored memes, but there really is this pulled back thing where it yep. gives her like a little bit of a, like a joker. Sli like a and the eyebrows. Joker and yeah, the eyebrows like are way up. And yes. That, and to your point of maybe rushing things through is that these things haven't settled yet. It's like that one season of Orange County when Vicki Gunvalson came on and her yep. facelift hadn't settled yet. And everybody right. was like, whoa, what the hell? Like, yes. And, and I, still I, very swollen. And I feel yes. bad for Brittany because I know. I know she's in a relationship that maybe Jax doesn't make her feel the most beautiful. And like, right. so I, I feel bad about those things like about, cause I know that matters to her and I, yeah, I don't know. It's, I feel bad. Yeah, I mean, I mean, did she, you see what Dodie did like D D Dodie with the, the sculpting of the body and her post yesterday where she showed the before and after. And I was like, yeah. 
man, like good for her. But at the same time, I, I hate my body so much. You would never, ca- I don't care if you give me a free new body. I am not going to make an Instagram post showing off my before and after. Like there's just no way in hell. Like I can't believe I just feel for these people sometimes. I would like to say out loud to anybody listening, if you want to give me a free body, I will post it on Instagram. I'll put it on TikTok, Instagram. I'll go I'll go live during the surgery. I don't care. If anybody wants to give me some life up, I'll take it. No, but I I know what you're I know what you're saying, but but for the Britney thing, I I people were like, "What's what's with this?" Really yeah. what it is, it's not necessarily the frown, is that she can't move her bottom lip. So when you talk oh. and your bottom lip doesn't move and it's just the top, it looks like. It just, yeah, it goes. So, but now in the most recent confessional that they introduced last night, when she's talking, up. you can you can see her teeth. So you'll yeah. notice, just notice when she's talking, you can't see her bottom teeth because this doesn't move. But now when she's talking, it is. So it's healed up what they've just recently recorded as a talking head. Um, <laughs> but she pulled her eyebrows way up, which is yeah, way wild. Up. But it is hard to watch because she is such a beautiful woman. That's obviously why Jax was attracted to her in the first place. She's so gorgeous. And then to have a baby and then feel bad about yourself and then be struggling with your kid and your marriage, it's all going to show on your face. And then also, by the way, if you're drinking a ton, that surgery stuff is never going to heal because your face is going to stay so puffy. Oh, wow. I got a lot of insight into this. I know you know a lot about that. This is actually great information, but I will say this is another thing that I think is good about the Valley is just these little things because it's what I talk about the 360 viewing experience is that it's not even what they're saying. It's just the fact that they do look so different in the talking heads because then you're thinking psychologically what this person is going through. Like, oh my God, they're really trying to step it up for their, the show, their husband, and they're putting their bodies and their faces through like really intense procedures to to do this. And to me, that, that (laughs) I'm like, and to me, that's entertainment. Oh, (laughs) you were like earlier, like the show is so dark. It's amazing. So, um, (laughs) so they arrive at the beach house. So Kristen is like, Kristen's doing that thing. Oh, I think I might be a little sick. And so I took, and everybody's just rolling there. I was like, girl, you had sex yesterday. Like you don't have morning sickness. Like everybody's kind of rolling their eyes. But then Michelle does say something pretty awful, which is, Please don't have a kid. We don't need more of you around. I didn't like that. The, the only that's not nice. Michelle. I didn't like that. I didn't like that either. And the only thing that I can think that why she said that is that Dodie knows where the bodies are buried. Mm-hmm. Dodie mm-hmm. knows who she cheated on, or who she allegedly might have cheated on her husband with, and maybe mm-hmm. that's why she says that in the Talking Head. Like in well, then Michelle the should be post. real nice to her. Yeah, but I think the, mm-hmm. I think she said in the Talking Head after realizing that this comes out potentially. Ah, uh, could be. Yeah. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. They did it later. So the ladies are going to do a real thing that ladies do, which is sip wine and paint and talk about their intentions and all this. Is this stuff. really what you like? Is this what you like to do? Do you like the, I, I like the wine part, but do you like to, to there's paint? so much let's go to sip and paint, sip and paint. Is that, it's, and but paint. last week with uh Kristen, uh, with, uh, uh, Katie Maloney and her uh, dating yeah. that young girl Tori. Yeah. They did a paint date. And I'm yeah. like, what is is this? It's just like, is this what we do now? Sometimes it's fun, but usually it's not. Yeah. Um, so they have to set intention, and Kristen starts talking about her intention is peace, and it's mm-hmm. hard for her because she's such an empath. To which you get all these reactions of everybody going, <laughs> "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> Um, and then on watch what happens live, they asked Schwartz if he thought Kristen was an empath. He's like, ish, uh, yeah. empath ish. <laughs> so Nia talks about her postpartum, which is important. And I'm glad she's talking about it. And she says, um, it, she explains how it feels is the, the wave of depression, you know, washing over you. And I was really glad that she was able to not only like discuss it because she does look so beautiful and perfect. What a perfect life. You know, they've got this nanny. They've got these three kids. She's got this great husband, the only one on the show that's nice. And she's obviously a Miss USA. She's incredibly gorgeous. It's interesting to hear her talk about it and how I know how to make everything look okay when it's not. I thought it was really important that she did all that and explained it so well. I don't know. I just think that sometimes on these shows, actually somebody watching it could be like, that's exactly how I felt. You know? She's, she's a reliable narrator. I really, I I trust her and I think it's very brave to open up about something that she's actually feeling. Mm -hmm. And 
as somebody that struggles with depression, it's so hard to sometimes vocalize what you're feeling or what you're not feeling. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine what it's like eight weeks postpartum, you know, and for somebody that also allegedly is feeling not, but is feeling these things sometimes for the first time in their life, Mm -hmm. give me a really scary feeling because you can't just snap your mind out of it. It's not like a, you know, like you can take medicine, but there's no kind of magic solution and it's a really scary place to be. And I felt for her so much and I loved, and I don't want to give too many kudos to the husband because it's all her, but I love this, you know, that he was very like, "I, I totally support you. Of course. Yes. I fully support this. I'm glad you're talking about this. That's, that's what relationships should be like is people supporting each other through hard times. Yeah. You can't imagine if Brittany was like, said that Jackson, pull it together. Woman, do you want to be a mother or not? Yeah. You want another kid with this shit? Are you kidding me? (laughs) Yeah. Right. So I think they are a really, really good, you know, example of a good relationship and Lord, please keep them safe. So, um, Hey, it's hot in the Valley. So there's going to be a pool party. We get it. Jesse talks about how horrible Isabella is when she's with Michelle. But look, look at her. <laughs> she's an angel. When, she's with, when she's with me, she's the angel. Huh. So they ask him how therapy's going. He's like, oh, it's a disaster. It's horrible. Everybody hates everybody. And he also tells us that about a year ago, Michelle applied for an apartment and told him she was leaving. And he asked for a second chance. And he listened to what she had to say. And she's... She gave him the second chance and he's giving her the space to kind of figure out what she needs. And then Jesse makes a joke about like, what if I got my eight pack back? Maybe she'd be more attracted to me. Now, this is when Jack says, I don't know, man, because Michelle's hanging out with beep right now. And they talk about how beep goes to the Chateau Marmont and beep is a director. And Jesse says, yeah, like, you know, when she was hanging out with beep, I told her, man, hike up her skirt, pull your brows, blouse down. Like, you know, they're trying to like get this real estate deals. And Luke says, um, seems like most people wouldn't be comfortable with that. And Jesse goes, <laughs> and Jesse goes, yeah, but guess what? If she does something, I could tell Isabella for the next 14 years that her mom fucked everything up. The amount this of is- glee he had when he said that. The amount of glee, like the amount of glee that He's came out awful. of his, it He's really so was awful. wild. But if you so did the, the, the bleeping in the director, that's why, I mean, a lot of people were saying Quentin Tarantino, but I don't think... It's Tarantino just because the timing of the beeps, even if you said Quentin or if you said Tarantino, it takes a long time. It takes a long time. My theory is Michael Bay, the director of like all the Transformers films and like big action movie director, uh, been around forever. Um, You know, Michael Bay, Bay, Bay is interesting. Somebody said Spike Jones, uh, which I I found a little harder to believe. Is but he married also, to Sophia Coppola? Spike Jones? No, used to be. Used to be. Used to be. Okay. Used to be. Yeah. Now, yeah. But um, so I but then Michael Bay also has been known to date a lot of playmates. And I think Michelle is beautiful, but I don't think she's a playmate. So it's a lot of <laughs> but by the way, guys, I hate to break it to you. There's a lot of probably creepy directors in Hollywood that we probably aren't even thinking about. So uh but that in what that, in are- what world is it Randall? Oh my God. Could you even, if there is a Randall Emmett tie in on the Valley, I would throw, I would lose. I mean, by the way, that, if that, if that happens, I will post my before and after pics on Instagram. Okay. I will. Okay. If that happens, I will do a before and after on Instagram. Could you even imagine? But we Ryan, know he that likes was my, Ryan, That was my first thought. But my first thought was Randall, Randall. Randall was the same type of blonde. And the thing with Michael Bay, though, is that Michelle follows Michael Bay on Instagram. Okay, but that means nothing. Well, she doesn't follow Terry. I mean, like if she's actually actively working with this man in the like terms of like real estate and stuff, you probably would follow one yeah. of your high earning clients. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's true. I don't even know if Tarantino has Instagram, right? He no, seems I mean, to be, well, he would seem to be too cool. I mean, he's married, he has a newborn and he just opened the Vista Vista theater, reopened that like he's really busy. Of course, I think he of course hangs out at the Chateau Marmont, but it's hard for me 
it's also hard for me to imagine Michelle not getting completely annoyed with Quentin Tarantino. Just because <laughs> anybody would. Yeah. He's like, here's the deal, man. I'll tell you when I was working on Pulp Fiction, man. Like, I just can't imagine. It would be like another, it would be like Jesse Lally in a sense, even though I love yeah. some of Quentin's movies. Yeah, I think that there's probably lots and lots of choices. But let me ask you, with that comment of like he says, maybe she'd like me better if I had my eight pack back. And they're like, she's hanging out with this guy. Did you take that to mean that guy, the director, is super hot? Or to mean like that guy, the director, is a troll? So in comparison, Jesse, you are hot. I, I thought it was... Tell. Uh, I see, really, it was very vague. But I, I would have rather... <sighs> Uh, see, that's a great point. I didn't really think of it in the sense because I didn't, he's hanging out with this guy. I almost just thought it was in reference to his power, not his looks of like, it doesn't matter what you look like. You got to be powerful, but okay. Michael Bay is not bad looking. He's, mm -hmm. he's d really decent looking. Tarantino obviously is Tarantino. Um, it's so that would Tarantino. actually, yeah, it's I not. just really, I think it's there's, not. they're trying to push that on, uh, somebody sent me out that on Reddit. They're trying to push no. that. I just don't think it is. I don't think there's a world in which that that is true. Not to say that he w wouldn't, but uh, I, I I really go with Michael Bay on this one. But okay, you know, I'm sure. Right, but well, by the way, it will be it will be uncovered. <laughs> Mark my. It words. will be uncovered. By, by the way, the should time. I just should I just text Doty right now and just ask who it is? <laughs> yeah, I'd love it. to know who it is, and um, if it's Randall, uh, everybody, you heard it here first. Ryan Bailey will take the free liposuction and do it live <laughs> on the air. We'll go side by side. We'll go side by side. Um, <laughs> all right. So at the Malibu house, uh, Michelle is talking to Brittany and she was, she's explaining about the marriage with Jesse. She says, you know, when I had Isabella, you know, it was during COVID and he was around a lot. And he was so helpful, but when the restrictions lifted and he went back to work, he wasn't involved at all. And then I felt very resentful. And now it's hard to get it back. That feeling of love for him because three years is a long time to feel resentful. And I'm feeling the same way I was a year ago and that I want to leave. And I know that this constant fighting and bickering is not good for our daughter. We've seen it just a little. So imagine how they are when cameras aren't in their house, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. to me, but, you know, last week's episode, they got all hot and bothered because Michelle stood up for herself at that party. And then they were like talking about like, oh, man, that was attractive when you did that. And I thought it was so funny when couples come together that hate each other just because they like, you know, a they, common they, enemy. They, yeah, they have a common <laughs> enemy and that like yeah. turns them on. Yeah. But yeah, I think there is obviously they're split up right now. So we see where this is going. But I think it's it's just another reminder of like, man, relationships are so tough. And also, if you are a certain way, like it's like you, you know, that that first like we were talking about with Sandoval and Raquel, you know, like that first wave of like love for somebody that's so tied with like sexuality and all, you know, it can be yeah. so, you know, so captivating, but that can like wear off. And then you like see who that person really is. And Jesse, no offense, has not come off like a great person already. So imagine mm -hmm. it's like living under that tyranny. And if somebody that cocky and it just sometimes is like, that probably is not attractive for, for certain. Women. No, he's such a jerk to her. So um, now we get Luke and his talking head and he basically goes, yeah, it's crazy. Like I know a secret that can blow up their whole marriage. So obviously it's this director, whoever it is. You can see um, the Christian Doty like seeping into him. You can see, you can see him uh, really changing. Cause every one of Luke's yep. talking heads should be literally like, I don't know what the F I'm doing here. Get me back to Colorado. Yeah. I miss my, I miss my air, my acreage. Yes. But now all of a sudden he's like, I know some shit. Yeah. So um, back at the beach house, the girls are doing truth or dare. And Brittany goes, what's the most embarrassing thing you did on a date? Okay. I'll tell you, we were on the uh, boat in Florida. It was like stingray <laughs> season. And I really had to go to the bathroom. Like my tummy was rumbling. And so I just got in the ocean and I was like pooping it out. And I was like, oh, the stingrays are eating my poop. I was like, this is the worst story so I've ever I looked, heard in my I life. Looked up, I looked up local newspapers in that area during that time. There was like a stingray extinction. Like they, she, there was a lot of stingrays that died in that area. I can't, I'm not going to say it's Brittany. But I'm going to say a lot of stingrays died. So I don't know. I don't know if I can put that two and two together. So disgusting. <laughs> Wait, so, also so attractive for Jack. Jax, I'm pooping on stingrays. They're eating my poop. 
but we know he famously poops with the doors open and talks to people. Yes, so but Jax maybe they're meant for each other. Jax, Jack, Jax needs control over somebody, and he's the one that's going to say if something's disgusting. His own behavior does not need to be talked about. Oh, God. So then they talk about, when was the last time you had sex? And by the way, I'm just going to tell you, for you people out there, married ladies do not sit around to talk about this. We just don't. I was wondering, too. I was like, is this, it seems like, and on Bravo recently, between this and Summer House and shows of like that, it's like, I feel like I know, like, I'm like, this is like my, my Catholicism really coming out, like, I'm feeling like I know too much. Like, like, I'm like, can we die? Like, I feel like Puritan. Like, I don't need to know. I don't need to know if you finished. I don't need to know how many times nope. you can like vague positions, you, nothing. You know, like I don't you, need I, like, and, and good, on, good on you that you feel that comfortable, but maybe that's part of the problem in the first place. I don't need to know. Mm-mm. So Brittany says it's been a month and a half. And then of course, Kristen's like, huh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any problems. Maybe she's find a 32 year old. <laughs> I don't know. We're just banging it out all the time. We get it. Oh my God. You have a lot of sex. We get it. So Brittany then kind of talks about how mean Jax is and how he puts her down. Shocker. Yeah. And she's like, I just don't feel attractive. And they're like, did you tell him this? And she's like, I, I have told him like, well, you have to communicate, you know, because he probably doesn't know. Of course he knows. And then she makes a great point. She was like, I have stood by him and taken up for him when he has literally, you know, was a felon in Hawaii. Like I have done, yeah. he screwed somebody while an old lady was asleep in the next room. I have stood by him through everything. And, you know, then he treats me this way. And she, yeah, yeah, great point. And then you married yeah. him in the first place. <laughs> so... The next morning, of course, Brittany's very hungover. And did you notice the product placement of the wine bottles on the kitchen counter? Yeah, Janet. They're all lined up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Brittany's hungover. And she's like, I'm going to throw up. I can't believe I said Bloody Mary's. Ugh. So Janet's and they're making food. And they go up and Kristen has left half. Her, they're like, Kristen left, but she left like her car keys, her wallet, her cell phone, and her vape. Like, how did she get wherever she was going? Like, that's just, <laughs> yeah, Kristen. So, um. By the way, Nia had left in the middle of the girls' night because the air conditioner. Let me tell you what: if the air conditioner goes out and you've got like the nanny there and three crying children, I don't blame him for being like, "Can you please come home?" Like, yeah, th- of course, obviously, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't begrudge him. That, that was a different situation. Yes, yeah. So she, she's talking to him and they're talking about the girls' night, and um, she says like what Brittany said about their sex life. She's like, "Well, it's, you know, one thing is like." At least we don't have that. And they talk about their rock and sex life. And then she's so cute. She's like, oh my gosh, like our child's going to see this one day. I was like, thank you. Somebody has realized it on these shows that one day your child could see this. You're talking about when you were conceived and when your kid was conceived, like TMI. (laughs) But they, um, then she talks about the postpartum with him. And this is where you were saying like, he was being so sweet and understanding about it. It's like, we're here for you, whatever you need. I'm glad you're talking about, I mean, the alternative is she doesn't talk about it and gets worse and worse and worse. I mean, so th- these two are just a great example of how to talk to each other. And, you know, yeah. Now we're at uh, Jackson Brittany's Jax has veneers and he wonders, should he even brush his teeth? The teeth are all fake. So this is the moneymaker. Yeah. So <laughs> a full set of veneers is like a hundred thousand dollars. Isn't it, Ryan? It's like really expensive. Now that I'll do before and after on folks. I will okay. gladly accept veneers. I will. If anybody's uh, running a veneer uh, Institute, please consider s- to sign me up. Okay. Veneer Institute of America, please reach out to <laughs> so bad. It's good with Ryan. But my veneer before and after they make me yes. show my whole body for some reason. I'm like, why do I have to pull my whole body in this? Yeah, it's just do the you veneers. Know- on um Darcy and Stacy, uh, when when they got went and got their new veneers in Turkey, they already have veneers, so they got new veneers in Turkey. When they take the veneers off, and what's you know what's underneath is your actual teeth that they file into tiny little shark teeth. Yeah, and yeah. they show that you're like, oh, so if Kyle Another- Richards got rid of her teeth, that's what her teeth would look like. That would be amazing if one day, like, like the thing they make veneers out of, like, you just like there's like an ex, like expiration date on everybody's yeah. veneers, and all of a sudden, just people are walking out with like tiny little like nub teeth. Little tiny a, nub all teeth. reality shows just like tiny nub teeth people. I'm so interested in veneers because it's like, then if what if you do get like a problem in your tooth, like if there's a yeah. cavity or something, you have to get a root canal. They got to take the whole system out. Like, what happens? 
And then also, does God get upset at you because he's like, I gave you that set of teeth and you didn't think I knew what I was doing? Like, if God exists, like, I do wonder if he gets upset or if, like, one of the Kardashians come up there, he's like, who the hell are you? You're not the person I made. Wait, you're Chloe? Are you kidding me? That's not how, that's literally not what I made. Like, I do wonder sometimes about things like that. He might be more upset about the waste of money that could be helping people. (laughs) You know? No, he's yeah. completely fine with the money. He's really just upset about the looks. His creation. Okay. God is shallow. So um, Brittany puts Cruz to bed. And um, the irony of Brittany and Jack sitting and talking about this drinking problem when Brittany is wearing a shirt of Jack's shit face all over, like Andy Warhol style. Oh, yeah. She's wearing a shirt of him in a very famous drunken scene. And they're, he's trying to talk to her about how much she drinks, looking at himself, looking like that. But also and, talk about the power dynamic, the fact that she would wear a shirt of her husband to have a conversation with her husband. Like already you're giving up power in that conversation by like, I have a shirt with you on it. It doesn't like, I mean, I love the point that he's wasted in the shirt and how ridiculous and hypocritical that is. But yeah. the fact that like, she's even wearing a shirt of like, it's just like, yeah, man, you're a fan is you're a fan. I thought she would just be like, I'm really going to stick it to him by showing him this picture of that time he was drunk. See, I don't even think it was that thought out. I think that's brilliant, but I don't think she, I don't think it's thought out like that with her. I think she probably has a stack of Jack shirts. Yeah, she does for sure. The ones that didn't sell on their website or whatever. I'm the number (laughs) one guy in the group. So, um, he's saying like, you know, I don't understand why you have to go out and get so drunk that you throw up. She's like, Jack, you do that all the time. He's like, no, I don't. She was like, he's like, I went, I did this. I was home and in bed by 12. She's like, well, I was in bed by 1130. Now I was (laughs) vomit, sleeping in my own vomit, but I was still in bed. I was pooping. I was pooping on Malibu (laughs) stingrays, but I was asleep. Malibu stingrays. (laughs) Oh my God. So, um, then, you know, they talk and he's like, why do you do that? And he goes, you know, I went out with Zach, blah, blah, blah. And then he says, yeah, I do worry a little bit about this behavior with her. I mean, it's California. She can smoke a joint. I was like, okay. So then. I love she, that Jax is like, you could be here doing drugs. Be here like, and do like, drugs with me like a real <laughs> wife you know, would. Like, I know. It's just like, hey, man, like I'm, I'm no, I'm no cop. But like, that's a funny thing to say when you're trying I'm to like, no rein in certain behavior. Oh, so she tells him about the Jesse Michelle thing. And she's like, you know, and I just said like, Jax is my best friend and he's my best friend. And they just really hate each other. And I do not want us to be in that same place in a year. Well, too, yeah, they should have like flash forwarded. Flash forward. Um, and so they are talking about, the, he's like, how deep did you get into it with our sex life? And she goes, well, I mean, the ladies, <laughs> as they do, every married lady goes around and talks about it once a week. No, we don't. Uh, their sex life. And she says, you know, I said it had been a month and a half. He's like, it had been that long. She goes, it has, GX. And she says, I just feel like you're not attracted to me. And I need like words of affirmation. If you just tell me I'm, he's like, oh, of course I do. I do all that stuff. He's like, I do it. I do all of that. What are you talking yeah. about? Stupid. Are you idiots? Yeah. <laughs> so she goes, no, you don't. So he explains that he's stressed out because he has so many years of like the phone not ringing and whatever, when he got fired off the other show and now he's got 30 cameos to do in a day and now he has a bar and, (laughs) and now he didn't have anything to do. And now he's got too much to do. And he's like, I'm just stressed out. And and you know, when you're messed up up here, done work down there. (laughs) Same with Gino and Jasmine. I'm sorry to laugh, laugh, but it is interesting to have an episode where you have like Nia having like a real, like actual conversation about mental health. And then sometimes I feel like Jax has always weaponized it or used it as an excuse. And I think those are two different things. Like I like to always point out that Jax was offered free therapy by Randall Emmett of all people. And even Lala was like, he never took it. He never took it. Like the man will do anything, but actually go to therapy and do what he needs to do to work on up here. Yeah. I think that's, yes, that's exactly right. And so um, then he's like, I'm stressed out. And so like, I'm sorry, we have to work on that. And um, she goes, um, well, we ain't going nowhere because we are thick ass thieves. The D word don't exist around here. No, sir, Bob. Our, that sign says couchy household established 2017. So he's like, yeah. By the yeah. way, that sign's yeah. probably going to wind up in my house. It's going to wind up in my <laughs> reality show museum. So like, you know, like that's what, like, it's always bad when you have some sort of sign or neon sign yeah. about your love. That's a bad yeah. sign. 
And then are you going to get uh, the one that's Rad in Kyle's, the, the one that's in Kyle's foyer that says like, bitch looks good or whatever, you know, that oh, neon okay. sign Kyle's <laughs> got in her foyer. <laughs> That'll be next. Yeah. And then he's like, our sexy time will last two minutes. Should we try butt stuff? He's like, oh, Jax, stop. Jax, no, oh. I'm, I, that's that's only meant for pooping on stingrays, Jax. <laughs> that's what gross, that's meant for you. We My mom was right her. here. Stop. Well, remember, it was real on Vanderpump Rules that he, she did let her, he, she did let him do it back there, remember? I'm trying to remember. We have so much butt stuff gets talked about on this show. I yeah. know Tamara talks about how she likes butt stuff. I don't remember her saying she that, let him do it. The one Real Housewives of Dallas uh, lady, what was her name? Uh, Stephanie Holman. They would always talk about it. And oh I was yeah, like, damn. Yeah, it's like that's what it's like right up there with like talk. Yeah, like I don't need to know. Like I don't. I don't like I, whatever you want to do in the privacy right, of your it. own home or your don't car. It. Like go for it. But yeah, no. or your car. Yeah. <sighs> um. Okay, so um, now Jesse and Michelle, this is very sad. So they're talking business stuff about escrow and rentals and whatever. And she's folding clothes and they talk about how miserable they are and how much they hate each other. And he says, like, I really do want to work on it. Like, I want to go back to how we were before, like right when we had Isabella. Like, I want us to be a team. I want to work on this. And he's kind of tearing up while he's talking to her. And she goes, I mean, I'm going to yeah. try, but I can't promise anything. Yeah. The amount of emotion, like you can just tell right there. Like it's, she's like, mm -hmm. you know, and you can tell, like you can tell she's like almost being guilted into staying. Yeah. And he's like foot on the gas with that too. Like he can tell as well. Like we're men are, st we're stupid, but we're not stupid, stupid. Like he knows, like at this point it, I mean, that's done. For, like but He's like, not nice to her. He's not. Exactly. But we he's haven't not seen be him be nice that. to her. He's, yeah. he's not going to be able to change that. It's just that she realizes that's not for her. It's it's wild. So, so like it's like just the fact that you want to be together, but you don't want to change your own behavior doesn't mean you just automatically get to stay together because you know, like you you got married. Like we're, I mean, we live in a day and age where that doesn't exist really anymore. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, but sometimes fortunately, you realize like I I'm I'm divorced. Like I like sometimes you realize you you can't live. You know, like that. Things happen and you realize yeah. there are certain behaviors that, that can't change or you can't kind of move on in the way you would want to. I mean, we even saw her this week, like packing for her trip and she's trying to be fun and flirty with him. She's like, look at my fun shoes. Do you think these are cute? And he's like, fine. Yeah. Ugh. Can I throw I away mean, this the, kid the painting? Is, Ugh. He yes. will be happier without her as well eventually. I think, yeah, I think he's happier without her now because I mean, mm. she's not really there she's very checked yeah. out and i do think it's it's a it's a this cause this cause this is what came first the chicken or the egg right like now yeah. she's unhappy and now that he's trying to backtrack it's like well maybe now it's you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube or how yeah, many it's really hard it's yeah. i mean it is sad if you think about the reality of that situation but it's also sad that this happens and you also agree to go on a reality show knowing that this is where you're on or are in a relationship. That's the part that sometimes makes me aghast is like, fudge, like going through what I went through, I would have never agreed to put any of that on reality. Like never in a million years. No, gosh. That's, no. An, that's another thing. If, if you text Kristen, what I, another thing I'd like to know is when this started happening, did they just all of a sudden go, okay, we're going to start filming in two weeks. Like, did they give them a short amount? They weren't totally yeah, ready. Know, I, that's, I, I, it has to be, it has to be running. They, they all of a sudden were like, we got to go now. Hey, Mary Payne, I got to do a 2 PM interview. Okay, um, so with Jesse Solomon. So I, with let's from log out. Else. okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just did. All right. We're going to log out everybody follow. So bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey. That's where you find him on Instagram. That's where you find him on the podcast. And if you're listening to me and you don't know me because you love Ryan, please follow me on Instagram. Yeah. And Mary Payne's going to be on my, Sorry, sorry, at Pink Shade Pod, yeah. but Mary Payne's going to be on my show in a couple of weeks. Um, so make sure you check that out. But I, I hope you guys really, I hope you enjoyed today. I hope some people enjoyed it. Yes. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye, Mary Payne. Sorry. Don't, ha don't hang up. Okay. Okay.